to celebrate baby and here with a great DIY that can you do with your children. That's why Coco is here today is Ken. And what are you going to be doing today, Ken? Well, we are going to be make living Easter baskets, right, Coco? Right. Right, because so this is the twins are now two. Coco is four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. Oh, wow. um, and we've always like pulled out the Easter basket the last couple years, but they're like mismatched. Some are plastic, some are wicker. So I wanted to create something that was sort of ceremonious when we mm -hmm. pulled it out to begin the season, and also something that would teach the kids about spring and growing and mm -hmm. the new seasons. Sure. So we came up with this, and Coco helped me put it together. And Coco, are we going to show everybody how to make it? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. First of all, tell us what materials we're going to need. So for the materials, what you're going to need is just a, a plain metal bucket. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to need soil, some various plants, calla lilies. Okay. That's the, the, I'm going to help you, but you can help. Oh, okay. okay. All right. We're not to that part yet, but yeah, you can help him. Grass oh, no. seed, and then you're going to need bark. Now, um, where to get bark is a little tricky. You can't usually buy at craft stores. You go out to your wood pod. You can get it. I actually had a couple helpers help harvest mine. Uh, I think we have a little video of that. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you have there, Margo and Flynn? Uh, looks like they're doing bark. Yeah, that's bark for our Easter baskets. Bark, bark, bark. Bark. But why? Why, why do we eat it? We're going to do a project with it. Mom, What's Mom, the project? Mom. Oh, we don't need that, Flynn. Thank you. That yeah, that's trash. Yeah. <laughs> just so oh that's how we go over down. Yeah. <laughs> just just throw it down. Yep. So that's what we needed. So we're going to get started, Coco. You're going to help me out here, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is get your piece of the bark, and it really does just pop. You have a wood pile that pops off the back of your wood pile, and you'll find it just lying there. And you want to get pieces that are going to be roughly the height of your bucket. If it's not quite the height, you can always just do a little line, run it through a chop saw or a little hand saw. And then you're going to put glue on it. Coco, you're going to help me here. Mm -hmm. Now, there, it is a little bit tricky. Give it a good squeeze. I'm using Gorilla Glue here because depending upon how big your log... For you, depending on here you go, Coco. You squeeze. Mm -hmm. Depending upon how big your logs are and the circumference, it may not match your um, the roundness of your bucket. Mm. So what's good with Gorilla Glue is it actually expands, yeah. so it'll fill in some of those gaps. Mm -hmm. um, but what you want to do is just get the piece, put it on, and then I found it's best to get a little clamp, hold it, clamp it at the top. You can also clamp it at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That will let the Gorilla Glue expand. And then all you're going to do is do that and then just go piece by piece around the bucket. You can decide how neat and tidy you want or how rustic. Mm -hmm. And then what you're going to end up with, once you're all the way around, is you're going to end up with this. Very simple. You still have the nice clean inside. Um, after you do that, you're going to have some little pieces that have like glue seeping through and all that, and that's where we're going to put the moss, right, Coco Bean? Wait. You want to help me with some of the moss? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a bit of the hot glue well, Did you here. karate chop that? How did you get it off? Get the, the yeah to get it so even across. Well, the that's what I said. All you do, mark with a just, pencil, and you can either leave it rustic like this, yeah. or mm -hmm. just get a little handsaw right. and just an exacto blade, or just sure. break it depending upon Dremel how. Dremel would rustic. probably be able to cut through Dremel. that too. Mm -hmm. It sort of depends upon how rustic you wanted it. Okay, Coco, you want to give me a little bit of the moss? Put it right there. Look at there. And then just a helper. little bit of moss here and there, kind of. And you're covering an just the sort of the imperfections of nature, if you will. Exactly. In that case, well. And so that makes it and a little make bit it easier. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so once you've done that, you want to add your handle. And we actually, because I tend to be a dumpster diver, <laughs> I found the branch that Shirley you finished her segment a couple oh, of days ago. Yeah. But, you know, I'm using forsythia here, but any of your branches in your backyard right now, they're we really, really pliable. By but the way, can we just take a moment and tell our DIYers out there entering the contest, it's not a prerequisite that you know how to jump in a dumpster. Yeah, right. I say, all, yeah. come on, yeah. support me. Almost all crafters yeah. are dumpster divers. You know you've done it. You, know you've done it. <laughs> you find treasures in there. You do. you do. You do. So I found this in our dumpster here, but any branch will do. And this, because this is going to take like a few weeks, something that hasn't bloomed yet is best. And Coco, you're going to put the end down here for me. Mm -hmm. And all you're going to do is end, and that becomes your handle. Aww. Very easy. And so this will continue to bloom and grow um, as you get closer to Easter. And Coco, you're going to help. Mr. Mark with the dirt. Here and then all the dirt. you're going to do is fill it up with dirt. So basically, you've got the bucket, and you can use the bucket year after year after year. Every year, fill it with new dirt, put in a new branch, uh -huh. um, and you're good to go. 